Um, uh, the Human Rights Watch and the Kenyan National Commission on Human Rights. Let's now speak to the government spokesman, Eric Kirai there. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking with us on the big story. Your quick reaction to the results of this post-mortem, um, the results coming out talking about, um, uh, you know, cause of death being cited in a number of cases as bullet wounds. What's uh, your reaction to this report? Uh, Yvonne, uh, I don't have a quick reaction to this, especially after the wrong, well-rehearsed recital by Wanuna. What I would want to tell you that uh, is that the report today was done by the government pathologist. It was not done by any private person. It was also done by IPOA, which is actually uh, an independent, a professionally independent institution, but basically housed under the Ministry of Interior. What the results of this postmortem underscore is that the government, as a policy, is committed to the investigation of every death of a person in Kenya, even when they are foreigners, and to ascertaining that the circumstances of that death are properly accounted for. If they die as a result of any criminal act by any person, whether that person is a policeman or is a private citizen, evidence is assembled and that person is made to face the full force of the law. What I would object to very quickly and in the strongest term possible is that under and KTN where I am today has been part of this, is this ongoing story that the government is clamping down on the opposition, the government is using excessive force. The fact of the matter is that where people die, the government does not want to debate that. And that is why the police tell you as a matter of policy, the matter will be investigated. The next thing I would want to tell you is that the government of Kenya by now is used to opposition. There are a few uh, engine couple of politicians who are missing the old days of 1990s, the days which made them heroes, and maybe rightfully so. But the days of gaining heroism by painting the government as brutal, by painting the government as intolerant of opposition, those are days which are gone by. The government recognizes opposition as part and parcel of a functional democracy. The government is ready and more than prepared and duty bound to protect the life of every Kenyan and to ensure that where such life is lost, proper investigations are carried out and those involved brought to justice. On the other hand, the government is committed to ensuring that the policing standards in the country are improved. It is a process either in operation planning, either in the actual carrying out execution of those operation plans, in the review of those operation plan, and corrective action to ensure that next time they do something, we see greater levels of professionalism. What I would want to say is that uh, the police themselves, I saw their statement given today. They have very clearly said those who die as a result of gun shooting, they have acknowledged that somebody died in Kibera. The responsibility now and the investigations is to identify what was the source of that fire. It is wrong. Mr. Kiraide. Very wrong. Mr. Kiraide? To suggest that, that source, the source of the bullet is a result of government policy. All right, Mr. Kirai, uh, um, we're getting ahead of ourselves and we will get there, uh, but your points are very well understood. Um, I'd just like to ask you this because you said the police, uh, you know, investigate all of the statements, um, but just last week, um, Mr. Kinoti, who is uh, the Assistant Inspector General of Police, um, said that... Um, no live fire was used during um, that uh, welcoming back of Raila Odinga from the United States. He said only tear gas and water cannons were deployed for crowd control. Um, but yet, here is that report detailing some of those 
that suffered gunshot wounds. Why would the police be very quick to determine a cause of death before investigations and even a post-mortem is done? Yvonne, you know better than to ask me about direct operational issues, but if you had questions on the statement from the police, you had every opportunity to ask them, but I'm going to tell you this for a fact. If the operation order for that day did not include that, use of firearms, the police spokesman had every right to say what he told you, and he was truthful. But they are criminals, and if today you listened to the governor of Kisumu, who is, a NASA, who is from NASA, and who is a man I know means well for this republic, and even for Kisumu, you had him talking about criminals who are hijacking demonstrations. So Yvonne, with all due respect, although I, I, I have not benefited, you had the responsibility to give me that report so that I am able to tell Kenyans something truthful and something I have all right. information Mr. about. Kiraide? Mr. Kiraide, allow me to the ask. The fact of the matter Mr. is Kiraide. that the, the management of crime did not stop. Yvonne, you ask a question, you must give it an opportunity to be answered. But I have to ask you this, though. Nowhere did we say that these bullet wounds were by I the police. My, my question is this, and it is not yet established whether it was the police that shot these people. My simple question would be why the police would be very quick to talk about the cause of death of, in fact, a number of them saying it was stoning, it was mob justice, when now we can see that a majority of them were bullet wounds, whether by the police or by criminals. The question is why the police would give a statement before a post-mortem and investigations are complete, regardless of where the bullets came from. Uh, Yvonne, you are a very old journalist and you know that. In matters of public interest, there is always the initial statement, which gives the information and is always predicated with what we know so far. What was provided at that moment is what the police knew and the reports which had reached their desk, because I know that that report came immediately after that. What is emerging now, remember, initiated and under the supervision of the government. The government pathologist is employed and works with the government of Kenya. Indeed, he, is, he works with the police department. Uh, and therefore, don't make it sound as if Imlu or somebody came from wherever he came from to come and do this post-mortem. That is what was known as at that point. And when the police release a follow-up report, after reviewing all the incidents, getting all the evidence available, and making uh, legal and logical conclusions, they will come back to you. Maybe that time they will tell you that initially we had believed two people, three people died of this. Now we have found out they died of this. Police services are doing that all the time in the world. It is not about uh, the National Police Service of Kenya only. All right, but that doesn't necessarily make it right, whether it happens in Kenya or around the world, does it? Uh, Yvonne, Yvonne, there is no time the death of any person, and take it this one from me very clearly, there is no time the death of any person will ever be right. It is more often a misadventure, it is unfortunate, it is regrettable, there is no person who will die and there isn't a human being to cry, there isn't a human being to feel anxious, there is a human being to feel fear. I hope we shall get there, is that as we deal with these incidents which occurred, it is very important to ask our brothers in NASA, are you able to conduct a proper demonstrations like we have seen other opposition do? Are we able to do demonstrations minus stones, minus petty stealing, minus, minus slings? Are we able to do it? I believe we are. Are we able to do demonstrations and vehicles use Mombasa Road, use uh, Jogo Road? You know, are we able to do demonstrations such that nobody is felt, feeling compelled to ensure that these demonstrations don't reach the city center? Whether it is the city center of 